Happy decaf Thursday. Mark, what is that? What you uh, just a bubble, sparkling water. Oh, we had some college students in the office today and I got a bunch of Starbucks coffee and my hand, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little unsteady because all I've been doing is drinking coffee all day. I need some, I need some food, need some protein because I'm like bouncing off the walls. So I'm into the new thing. There's a, there's a place called, have you ever heard of Franklin juice company? I'm sure you've heard of like juice stuff. Yeah. So I had, um, I have like a new favorite drink there, but apparently nobody else likes it. It's like, um, I guess it's pecan milk. What is that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cashew milk. It's cashew milk. Oh, I but love it's, cashew milk. It's so good. It's like got like, it, and it's kind of sweet and it's super good for you. And it's fantastic. And like, I, I've been, I've ordered like four last five days on Uber Eats when I went in yesterday and they're like, I was like, oh man, this must be popular because it's always, it's always out. They're like, no, just nobody really orders it. So <laughs> it's not, but it's great. So it, people should start ordering cashew milk so they have it in more often. I love cashew milk. And I've also had cashew queso. Siete Foods makes queso from cashew milk and it's actually really good. Well, cashews are good and queso is good. So it makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense why it would be so good. I'm, I'm a fan. Um, Let's talk about something happy for a change. We're going to start off with something happy. We never do this. We never talk about happy things mm -hmm. first, but we always, we've been talking about a few times over the last couple of years, how Dolly Parton is like the goat. Like she keeps doing really good things to help people and coming up with market solutions to different problems. And Dollywood is doing another thing where they do just that. Um, for years and years and years, people have been campaigning on and talking about free college tuition. Dollywood is taking matters into their own hands, not putting it on the government and on taxpayers to pay for people's college tuition. And they are introducing a program, what, that pays for employees' college tuition and books, if that's what they want to do. That's that's pretty yeah, 100, sick. 100%. 100% of tuition and books for people who work at Dollywood, which I think is, I think I saw something like 11,000 people, I guess it's total. So, I mean, that's a really, really, you know, great incentive to work there too. She's going to probably get a lot better workers because I mean, not that she, but like everyone's going to want to work there. It's like, Hey, if I get free college tuition, that's awesome. So okay. it's a great thing. Again, it doesn't, you don't necessarily need the, you know, the government to offer free college for all. It's like, there is market solution. And she's kind of putting her money where her mouth is. And that's, it doesn't really matter where your politics are. It's just this great idea that you can, you know, achieve something without forcing the government to or forcing other people to pay for it. So I that's know, an exciting thing. I think everyone should praise that. It feels weird to say that that area where Dollywood is, is rural because it's not rural by like appearance standards, but the population is relatively low. It didn't even make it onto our city freedom index, which was all the cities in Tennessee that were above a 20,000 population. So as far as populations num population numbers go, the area where Dollywood is and the area that it serves with its employees would be a more rural area. So this is probably an opportunity that a lot of people wouldn't normally have without this. Yep, that's right. And I mean, a lot of people, they work there and it's just, it's just a, especially people who, you know, have graduated high school, maybe they can't quite afford college. It's just a great opportunity to kind of incentivize them to go back to school and say, you know what, this is a great opportunity and you don't have to pay for it. I mean, how do you beat that? Well, of course, Dolly's getting, you know, good employees out of it. So I think it, yeah. I think it works. And grateful and thankful employees who will probably stick with them for a long time and you know once they get their college degree or whatever they, they can potentially move up in, in the organization so it's just kind of a it's a win-win it's awesome that she's doing that i love that dolly really puts a high emphasis on education you know with her books the way that she sends out the children's books i have a lot of friends who have kids that read her children's books i think that's really cool and I, i'd like to think that if i was famous and had the means i would also put a huge emphasis on intellectual development of of young people i think that's such a cool thing and a really cool way to, to pay it forward what she's been able to it has nothing to do with her career it has nothing to do with music oh, it just is no. a way to to give kids better opportunities i think that's i think that's huge and pay it forward and don't forget all the great things she did after you know the 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 fires right. there yeah yes. so i mean she has done a lot for that community she continues to do a lot for that community and I mean, again, it's something where we can take a page out of her book. Of course, we don't have the millions and millions of dollars that she does. Right. But this whole idea is if you think something's important and you want something, try to make it happen and try to help other people rather than, you know, relying on the government and other people's tax dollars to do it. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that's awesome. So way to go, Dolly. Another thumbs up from, from the decaf team. Um, I never thought I would say this, but thumbs up to the New York state governor for wow. finally i know i know mark i'm trying to spin it positive i'm trying to be positive today i'm not i'm not i'm not giving her a thumbs up but fine <laughs> but she's finally done something right which is but is it right okay here's what here's what's happening is they're repealing their indoor mask mandate in new york not and, for schools though schools still have to have it right which is did anybody see the photo of stacy abrams with the school children this week <laughs> yeah that's what i thought okay so 
they're finally repealing the mask mandate. One of the things that Mark said that I thought was so interesting is that everybody keeps going like, well, the science, the science says this. No, it's the politics. The science has always said the same thing. Now that now the politics are catching up and they're and they're repealing the mask mandates. And it is too little too late, but at least they're doing it. I guess I'll give her like one thumbs up instead of two. I don't know. I, I'm I'm giving her too much credit. I know. Take it away, Mark. I, I'm, I mean, I'm done with this. Is, it's obvious now. Anybody who hasn't done it is really deserves blame at this point. It has nothing to do with whether you have done it. It's like if you haven't, you're the problem. Right. And uh, I mean, granted, she's not been in office for a, a long time. Obviously, it was Cuomo for right. a while. But I, I mean, I know that a lot of the you know the cities in California, I think Newsom's considering getting rid of it now. So I mean, like, it is just a. It's just one of those things where it's just politically unpopular. Now people have had enough. They again haven't seen really what the masks do. Uh, if there's any, and if there is a benefit, which I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a little bit of benefit, but it's it's minuscule and not worth what you're forcing, you know, kids and people and businesses to do. So I, I don't give her credit. This is just very obvious. And again, she did this, you know, a year ago, which she wasn't even in office. But like, if somebody did this a year ago, I give them credit. At this point, it's like you're doing it for political reasons. The midterms are coming up. You don't want your party to get hammered. Um, which I think it, most people want to see it as too little too late. It's crazy to me thinking about how we live in Tennessee and even Nashville, which, you know, is a somewhat liberal city. We haven't even thought about mass for, for what, a year and a half? I know. I, when I, I going to the airport. York, we haven't, we haven't had, that's not part of our lives. I know. When I went to New York wearing masks again, my skin obviously freaked out because it wasn't used to being trapped under a mask the whole time. They would make you like wear a mask when you got up and went to the bathroom. I tried to get up from the table at a restaurant and go to the bathroom and an employee said, please put your mask back on. Like to get up and walk literally 20 steps to a bathroom. It was insane. So it's it's about time they're, they're finally doing this, but it is. And they shouldn't even, again, even if you, you can say what you want, but they should never put that requirement on businesses to begin with. It I really agree. is not a fair thing to do. Um, if you want to put it on again, I don't re I don't believe in masks in school. I don't think it makes sense to me, but mm -hmm. at least that's like a government function. So if you're like, okay, well, like, right. or if you say like, you got to wear a mask and you come to the Capitol, like, fine but when you're forcing private businesses private to enforce businesses. something that you want to enforce that's a problem to begin with and the I fact that it's gone on this long in, in new york it's just insane and and, and it's continues going to california so like there's a lot of problems with this and it's just I, I i mean they finally have figured it out but it's it's too little too late in my opinion yeah um you mentioned governor former governor cuomo um this is kind of off topic but i got a wall street journal alert the other day that said he was exploring running again and is lining up his political enemies he's going to come after his political enemies i sent it to a few friends and the overwhelming consensus was bro quit while you're behind find something else to do nobody wants you back well i didn't know he was thinking about running again I just saw it on Wall Street Journal. I don't know if it's true, but apparently wow. he's been lining up his political enemies. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens there. But it's kind of like, dude, quit That's while you're wild. I mean, in fairness, I do think that I don't feel like his stock has taken as much of a hit as it has in the media. I, I do feel like people in New York would still vote for him. That is. I mean, it kind of reminds me when, when Megan Barry um, resigned. And of course, what Megan Barry did was probably not even close to as bad as Cuomo did, but right. especially when you consider the nursing home deaths. But people still generally like him. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if he won in New York because the rest of the country thinks he's, you know, a trash bag. I mean, New York votes for trash bags all the time. So I don't think it would be a problem for them. It's true. I love that you start, you've called, you call people trash bags. I've started calling myself a human trash bag on days where I <laughs> don't like do my face because I do look like a human <laughs> trash bag like yesterday I didn't do anything to my face and I was sitting on the couch eating Pringles at two o'clock in the afternoon and I was like this is full trash bag status <laughs> and I need to I need to get my crap together real quick <laughs> this is bad you and Cuomo. Um, what <laughs> you and Cuomo <laughs> okay take it back I'm calling my mom that's me <laughs> um okay so speaking of uh liberal governors who have completely lost their base do you think that the supreme I've Supreme. Whoa. Do you think the Super Bowl is going to be as controversial? Do you, do you think that the LA mayor, that Governor Newsom, do you think they're going to forego their masks at the Super Bowl this weekend, just like they did at the playoff game? After all the yeah, I, I, I have to imagine after all the political heat they took, they will make sure their masks are on the whole time. Um, that is insane. If you're but, not wearing yeah. it for the true purpose, then don't wear it at all. Anyway, I digress. Well, they, they don't care about that. I mean, it's all so it's true. all a show. It's all it's all for publicity. So it's so true. Um, well, I think we need to move past that and just be excited about the game and just stop talking about these, you know, complete hypocrites that everyone realizes are hypocrites. It's like just 
they're bad. They're bad people. And I don't care how you vote or what party you identify with. The hypocrisy is just stunning. It, it really is insane. I totally agree. But one more thing, if we are making Super Bowl predictions, I predict that they'll get caught not wearing their masks. Okay, let's make game predictions. <laughs> so I really, I think the Chargers will win, but I, but I'm, I, okay, I'm afraid. Chargers, the Chargers aren't even in the Super Bowl. Win. The I mean, the Rams. The Whoa, gosh, the colors. It's in my head. Yes, please, the Rams. please take Sour's prediction seriously. <laughs> I, I, maybe, I've had too, maybe this is what too much coffee is like. The Rams. I, I don't want the Rams to win. I'm afraid they will, but I did put my money on the Bengals. Okay, so you did. You told me last week you put your money on the Rams. I took it back. I cashed out as soon as we got off the podcast because I placed the bets I don't before think you we got Okay, on. yes. Well, it should be an exciting game. I don't think – it's one of those rare situations, I think, where I think that I'd be really, I mean, other than my money, I'd be happy to be their team one. Uh, Matt Stafford has been around forever. He's a guy that I'd love to see win. I mean, he's been around for, you know, he's and he's been on so many bad teams. It'd be really cool to see him win. Um, and I, I love just a lot of those guys on the ramp that they got in Cooper Cup is probably the best player in football that never yeah. gets the credit he deserves. But then again, I mean, I like Burrow. The thing is, Burrow, Jamar Chase, T, it's all these guys I like on the Bengals, they're young and they're gonna have a lot of chances to win Super Bowls, I think. Like the Rams have a bunch of old guys, Von Miller's never won a bunch of like good, but they're all like 33, 34 plus. So it kind oh, of feels like it could be their last chance. Um, so I want the Rams to win. I bet on the Rams, um, and I'm saying 27, 24 Rams. Okay. Well, I, uh, I cashed out some of my bets and I, I kept one, I kept one bet, like just like a you random. You should never cash out, right? Those cash outs are terrible deals. You're I losing know, money. but I got nervous and I, and I, I hesitated. I got well, nervous. Don't bet it then. Don't, don't, you're losing money and you cash out on something. Those are I, terrible deals. And the reason is because they want people who don't really know what they're doing to cash out. So they make money, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I mean, I lost probably like 36 cents, but I got some free bets and I put all my free bets on the Bengals. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens, but I'm just really excited because I love Super Bowl Sunday. I'm going to a party for the first half and then watching the second half when I can actually watch it. And that's kind of like the way I like to do it is, you know, go and socialize, eat all the food, have some hot dogs, have some pizza, have some chicken fingers, and then go back home and watch the second half in a place where I can actually watch it and enjoy it. That's, that's kind of my vibe. What's your Super Bowl vibe? So I used to like when I was younger too, like in college and then was out of college, you see the Super Bowl parties and I realized how much I hate them because you have a bunch of people who don't watch football, who have no idea what they're talking about, who are, are, are conversing about stuff that I don't care about during the Super Bowl. I just want to watch the game. I, yes. I don't care. I don't care about the commercials. You can watch commercials. I don't care. This is a big game. You know, there's a lot of money I can win. I don't want to hear you talking about garbage. So okay. it's going to be me, Soto, and Kira. It's going to be the three of us. And it's like, I know that we'll be able to watch football. And that's an important thing for me when, I'm, when the Super Bowl's on. So I get why people want parties, but it's always the people who know nothing about football, nothing about the game, who are doing this social event. And that's not what I'm interested in. So no, that's I not know. That's, that's why I only watch the first half with people. I that's have, that's I like, too much for me. I would never yeah, do that. <laughs> that's fair. I, I still want to eat the fun football food and not have to cook it and go to the party and stuff. So first, you can do that yourself. We're going to order wings and pizza in. There's a, there's delivery things. I don't know if you've heard of that, but like there's apps that you can actually order food on. It's crazy. Okay, it's, it's but it's fun to knowledge. watch a little bit of the game with your friends. But then when it comes with your friends to- who like football, that's why I'm watching with Soto and Kira understands what I want in the, in this thing. So she won't talk about other stuff. So no, that's, I understand what you're doing. People like, socialize and I, I mean you're not as big of an nfl fan as i am so it's right. like i know that you care about the game but it's like you like to talk to your friends too and i mean i think you're doing a good compromise for you you can watch the second half and watch kind of the, the hopefully good game finish and you can still like see your friends and eat food that people make but i but i do agree with you about what needing to watch games kind of in solitude during the world series me and my friend who i'm planning yeah. on watching the super bowl with we watched two games with our friends and we were like, no, we're done. He and I were like alone in one room and everyone else was in the other room talking. And he and I were like watching the TV alone without anybody else. And when at the last game of the World Series, it was literally just the two of us because we were like, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> we can't. That's what you have to do for, for sports you care. I remember some of my friends like texting me like, oh, you're home. Like we want to watch the Jazz. We're going to watch the Jazz playoff games. And I'm like, no, I'm good. No. I, I don't want to deal with you talking about other stuff. And also when you're in that like, when you have a team you like, when you're in that horrible mood of, oh my gosh, we just lost in the end of our seasons there, I don't want to talk to anybody. No, I don't want you to turn on Quiplash and say, let's play a game. Like, no, I'm not going to play a game. I'm in a terrible mood. I watch Alabama games alone. <laughs> I watched yep. two, I, I, I guess we watched the last two World Series games, just the two of us. Like, I can't have people around who don't care about it the same way that I do. 
The only I person I'll watch Alabama football with is my mom or my brother-in-law. I can't. Yeah, things, I actually would, I, I would watch a football, some things with you, other things I wouldn't. I would never watch March Madness with you, I don't think. Yeah. In Alabama, I probably would because you'd be into the game. Yeah, but I don't like, talk. Yeah, but, or like the Braves, like, I think I'd do that. I also don't talk during those <laughs> yeah. games. If I super care, I don't talk. I can't talk. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll freak out. Yeah. We agree. Totally so, but it'll be a good Super Bowl, and I'm excited, and I hope the Rams win. Speaking of uh, March Madness and college basketball, I know we're in Super Bowl mode today, but I have to say, if we can't beat Auburn, it's a beautiful thing to see them lose in overtime to another SEC team. That was beautiful, honestly. And I know I'm being that annoying fan that only wants to see their rival team lose, but so be it. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing to see Arkansas beat Auburn this week. You got to beat Georgia. I think that would be a bigger win for you, but yes. Um, and, and of course, I called the Arkansas game. I have been just on fire for college basketball this year and, and football. I feel like right now, if you need betting tips, like I'm I'm hot. I mean, of course, you go through hot and cold streaks, but right now I am really hot. Betting. He's, so he's on let it. me know he if you need any college basketball tips. He knows what he's doing. I've been, uh, I've actually been enjoying college basketball this year. I typically don't really get into it, but I've really been enjoying it this year. Well, that's good because you'll enjoy the tournament a lot more when you watch. Like, because I feel like some people are like, yeah. oh, I didn't watch games all year. Now it's the tournament time. I'm into it. But like, when you know more about the teams, it's, it's more exciting. And I think it, I think it's because I do want to get more into enjoying basketball. Um, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, before we go, let's talk about our favorite Super Bowl halftime shows ever. Um, I know you don't super care, but there have been some there have been some good ones in the past. Uh, a few years ago, Bruno Mars played, and I thought that was one of the most fun halftime shows I have ever seen. What do you yeah, think? I, I didn't like it, but I don't really like him, so I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> remember a few? Remember when we were kids and the Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake halftime show happened? And then oh the yeah, very, yeah, of course. Yeah, and then the very next year they swung the complete opposite way and did Paul McCartney just sitting there playing the piano for the halftime show. They were like, "We're not going to risk it at all." <laughs> Yeah, so I don't remember this, but like I'm looking back because I don't like any of these acts. I guess 2000 would have been awesome. I don't remember it, but it's Phil Collins, Christina Aguilera, Enrique Iglesias, and Tony Braxton. That sounds like my all time favorites. That, that was a great, a great set. I guess in recent times, I don't like them, but I like some Maroon 5 songs. Like, I guess that was my favorite recent Maroon one. Was because good. Like, I like some of their songs. Remember when Beyonce did it and everyone was like, um, all over Twitter, they were talking about how it was going to be like an Illuminati, like something crazy was going to happen. Oh, yeah. And then half the power in the stadium did go off during the performance because it was like way, it was like a huge production and some of the power did go off and people were like, Illuminati, Illuminati. I was like, I didn't even notice. I was like fixed on the TV because I love Beyonce so much. I think my favorite Super Bowl bet I've ever made because this is such a cool because they have these weird bets in the Super Bowl. But when Maroon Five played, I said that the their first song I got fourteen to one. I picked Harder to Breathe as their opening song, and it ended up being their first song. So I'm like, that was their kind of their first hit. Maybe they'll play it first. Yes, and I won like three hundred dollars and then playing Harder to Breathe first. So that was a great. That was a fun bet. Fourteen to one it was. Did you see the trailer for this year's? They did an actual trailer for the halftime show. That was so cool. I am. I'm actually really excited, Justin texted and said I am the key demographic for this halftime show because it's like the people who liked rap in the early 2000s yeah yeah I mean I mean I think it's I think it's a smart because I mean and I think that Eminem still has you know a lot of fans and I think Dr. Dre and stuff yeah. like I mean it, it, it appeals to a lot of different audiences I think and a lot of people think Kendrick Lamar is really good so I, I actually think it was a pretty smart decision to put these guys on there. I'm not a huge fan of any of them, but like, they're fine. I'm just not a huge rap fan, but I think it'll be an interesting show. And like, I might watch, we'll see. Oh, it'll be great. Last year. I did think I will say that I thought the weekend's performance last year was super weird, but they had to wear masks the whole time. And so I thought it was really that. innovative how they did the bandaging, like on his, on the cover of his album, he had that, all that bandaging stuff and they hid the mask with the bandages. Honestly, the people who get paid for marketing for the for the Super Bowl halftime shows deserved a raise after that because I thought that was really good. <laughs> I just, yeah, that was great. Just got a text too. This is the first time that we'll ever do this, but breaking news, James Harden was just traded to the Sixers for Ben Simmons. It's like a gigantic NBA trade. And unfortunately, we're not doing this live, but otherwise we'd be like the first person to report this news. So yeah, we just really a cool would. thing. So as we're going to the Super Bowl, the NBA trade deadline ends at two o'clock today. So very cool. Oh yeah, Mark said we got to record the podcast early so we can watch the NBA trades, which luckily for him, I do not care about. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the Jazz do something cool. Oh my gosh, classic. Well, I mean, I, I will say that our podcasts have slowly 
devolved into just sports talk, which is all really, really good. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're going to move back a little bit. I think once the Super Bowl's over, we can move back a little bit to pop culture. Yeah, because the Braves probably won't be as good again this year, so I won't care as much. But uh, yeah. but um, with that, happy Super Bowl weekend, everybody. I am very excited to uh, take a nap on Sunday afternoon and then wake up and watch some really good football. Um, that's, that's the best kind of Sunday afternoon. So go Bengals for me. Go Rams, Go Rams for you. Yep, that's right. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.